eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. And we will live in a place where there are streets and there are uh, precious stones and there's a river running through the middle of the New Jerusalem. God's got an ending to our story here on earth. Exactly. And when you wrote this book, Finish Line, uh, you, you weren't just um, speaking in a vacuum or, or just uh, relating some, some research data. Right. This came from your own personal experience. Talk about that. It did. Well, in 2012, my wife, Bobby, and I have a picture of you two in taking I, I remember, in the, I remember in taking the it. spring of 2014. Um, and it's just the two of you, and you're both smiling. In seven months, she was in heaven. So she was in the middle of chemo at that time, so she had very short hair. But the story of my late wife, Bobby, and what she did with the diagnosis that was terminal is really at the heart of what I'm trying to say in this book. Mm. And that is, Bobby's death and the way she dealt with death completely Im eliminated my fear of death. I mean, that sounds really crazy, but it's true. I was there when she was diagnosed, and I was there when we said goodbye. And it really is an amazing story. Mm. Not many people have a death experience that is like this, and I'm deeply grateful. It's, it's God's grace that gave me the chance. But so my daughters, I have two daughters. Uh, today, Missy is 52 and Julie's 49. But they came in to the house. We lived in Orlando, Florida. They came in on a Monday morning. We spent the day together. Bobby had, is in a hospital bed in our house. And she was totally lucid. I mean, I have video of her hugging them when they came in. Incredibly sweet. So we spent all day talking, mm. laughing, telling stories. So that night, I went to bed. I had been doing this for 30 months. And I'd never been so tired in my whole life. It was an honor for me because I was healthy enough to help yeah. to be your primary yeah. caregiver. But I went to bed. Missy came and woke me up an hour and a half later and said, Bobby's calling for you. So that was Monday night. Tuesday morning, we got up, we woke up, we had devotions. Bobby read through the Bible 35 times in her life. Wow. And I had a copy of the one-year Bible that was hers. It was filled with notes and underlining. I mean, there's so many things I could tell you about her and her love for the Lord, her love for mm. his, his word. So I, I read a passage, Bobby said, I, I underlined that, didn't I? And I said, yeah, you did. She said, I wrote a note in the margin, didn't I? I said, yeah, you did. And I read her what she had written yeah. in the margin, yeah. like the date and then something else. So the hospice nurse came. She came twice a week for about 20 minutes. She came, Bobby said, hi, Enid. And Enid said, hello, Miss Bobby. And they were back and forth. So Enid sat down next to the bed and she put the cuff on Bobby's arm, you know, and blew it up and let the air out, yeah. get her blood pressure. And she said, your blood pressure is, and I don't remember the, num the numbers, but Bobby said, that's really low, isn't it? Enid said, yes, yes, Miss Bobby, that's very low. So Enid reached over to get her, take her pulse. And so she did this on one wrist, and then she moved her other wrist. Bobby said to her, you don't feel a pulse, do you? Enid said, no, Miss Bobby, I don't feel a pulse. This is October 28th, 2014. So Bobby said to me, would you put the bed back, because it was a hospital bed so I put it back and she turned to me I was sitting right there next to her in a chair and she took me by the shirt and she pulled her my face in right next to hers my nose was two inches from hers and she said I love you so much and she died just like that in fact Missy my daughter said to the nurse is she dying the nurse said no she's dead she's dead she's gone she put her hand on Bobby's chest and she said, wow. she's not breathing. Her heart wow. has stopped. So that, that, was, that was the goodbye of this person that I had been married to for almost 45 years. Wow, thank you for sharing that, that, that personal story uh, of, of Bobby's passing. And Robert, I, I have been so inspired by you and by Bobby and by your story together uh, because it's so infused with hope. And you talk about that in your book, approaching this finish line with hope. You have chapters in there uh, like dead, not dead. Uh, you talk about Jesus's finish line. Right. Uh, the, the line he, he, yeah. he spoke at the finish, it is finished. That's right. Why is hope hmm. 
so central to your perspective of the finish line? Well, because it's truth. So Bobby's favorite verse, in fact, when I signed this book for folks, I, I signed it, 1 Corinthians 2.9. <clears throat> okay, here's what it says. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Mm. So Bobby was an artist, eye has not seen. She was a musician, ear has not heard. She was a dreamer. She was a storyteller. Neither, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Because we know Jesus, because we have laid our sins at the foot of the cross and he has saved mm. us, we have something to look forward to. I mean, so how does it feel when you go to bed some night and you know the next morning something amazing is going to happen? The anticipation of heaven changes everything, changes everything. So, Randy, as you've been researching the subject of the place of heaven, uh, what are some of the common misconceptions that you think people have about it? Well, a lot of people just think of it as a disembodied state. And the, the present heaven may be, to a degree at least, a disembodied state, although people are described there as walking, uh, talking, sitting, kneeling, uh, and, and even uh, wearing white robes and carrying palm branches and things like that, which are all very physical. So I don't exactly know how you would do that without maybe some form of a body. But we know, of course, that the resurrection hasn't happened yet. People are not resurrected one at a time uh, when we die. Uh, the resurrection is coming in the future. But people think of heaven as this angelic realm of uh, disembodied spirits floating around the clouds, uh, kind of a cartoonish view of heaven. But the Bible has something radically different. It's a resurrection-based new earth where Jesus said we will eat and drink and Abraham and Isaac will come and we'll sit at feasts together. We will eat and drink in resurrection bodies. Christ showed us what a resurrection body is like. He ate and drank with his disciples. He said, touch me. I am not a ghost. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as I have. Randy, some people think of, of heaven as, uh, you, like you said, a, a place where we're disembodied spirits and the whole place is kind of this whispery, vapory-like place. Um, but you really talk about this like it's a, a real physical place with streets of gold and precious stones and things like that. Um, what, what verses in the Bible would you point to that would really help us to understand the nature of the place called heaven? Well, I think you start with what Jesus said about his resurrection body and the knowledge that ours will be like his and what he did and he ate and drank and he said, uh, I'm not a ghost, I have flesh and bones. So that's a signal to us. That's what our resurrection body is going to be like. Okay, so then when we go to Revelation 21 and 22, and then Old Testament passages we know to be New Earth passages because they are quoted and applied to the New Earth in Revelation 21 and 22, uh, such as uh, Isaiah 60, we we look at those, and they are very uh, human, uh, earthly, not, not worldly in some negative sense, earthly. God created the earth, you know, and God created the earth to be a paradise. And God didn't lose the battle against Satan. Uh, he, he, he made human beings to rule the earth to his glory, and we think, oh, well, yeah, but that all failed. That plan failed, so God had to come up with plan B. No. Jesus went to the cross so that plan A could be fulfilled in his plan that forever we would, to his glory, rule the earth uh, and, and, and do the things that people actually do. Worship together, talk together, walk together, relate together, uh, probably sit around you know, campfires and, and do all the kinds of things that human beings actually do. Just simply read Revelation 21 and 22, and you'll see how earthly this place is. It talks about the nations of the earth. They're really nations. It talks about rivers, and it talks about all these different physical earthly things. 
Some people argue that the current earth will be completely destroyed. And, and by that, I, I'm picturing like the Death Star, you know, completely destroyed. And then God literally creates a new earth where we live forever. Others see the, the new heavens and the new earth more as a, a whole new world under the new covenant order with a new ruler, Jesus, who dethroned the devil. He's now seated on the throne in heaven and the earth is under new management, i.e. the new covenant order rather than the old covenant order. But I think you're arguing that God creates a new earth by resurrecting the current earth, yes. not destroying it Death Star style and recreating a new one. What scriptures can we go read that you think help us to understand the proper perspective? Well, first of all, 2 Peter 3 is a passage that people normally quote to say, well, look, the old earth is going to be destroyed. I mean, it's going to be annihilated. And I say, yes. Now think about what happens to our bodies after we die and we've been dead for a hundred years or a thousand years. Those bodies Decomposed. are destroyed. Right, exactly. That's what uh, decomposition is. It's the destruction. Okay, so now in the resurrection, do we say, oh, yeah, but it, they can't be our, our old bodies because our old bodies have been destroyed. No, it been destroyed, but that's no problem to God. DNA, molecules, he can reassemble anything uh, he wants to, and he can do the same to the earth. So to me, the, 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 the guide for our thinking about the new earth is the same as for our thinking about our new bodies. We know what our new bodies will be. They will be the same old bodies made new. That's why Jesus' uh, body was no longer in the tomb after the resurrection, because it was his old body made new, right? So if his, if it was like, his, well, his old, I mean, our old bodies are never going to come back. God's just going to make new bodies. No, because then his body would have been in the tomb. Our bodies shall be raised. And likewise, the earth itself in that passage in Second Peter 3, where it says, therefore, we are looking forward to a new heavens and a new earth. Not a non-heavens and a non-earth, a new heavens and a new earth. It wouldn't be called new earth if it's not an earth. 